going through the rest of the week. So tonight I'm obviously uh, going to go through your Friday, the Friday session, but also I'm going to uh, quickly go through what um, is on the plan for Saturday and for Sunday, and then we come back on Monday uh, with the live streams again. So hopefully you're uh, up to date with uh, what you've been doing, but we'll. Uh, uh, outline it again and you can either you know finish off this week or start again next week it's fine okay so a couple of little things uh on the news today that they were talking about uh bridges um flight bridges whatever from from uh, places that uh, have got low uh low infection rates and one of them's greece so it does look really good that uh, for us to go on our yacht trips so if you're interested in yacht trips we've got several options please uh let us know obviously we're really limited spaces so we can create a, a bubble when we're over there and so to get around the distance in obviously we don't spend much time um on land uh and so most of the time we're just in the bubble on the on the yacht so if you fancy going on a uh, free diving trip yacht trip let us know um hopefully um we're looking at you know july the earliest trip end of july and we will have uh say a, a bubble with um flight bridges uh, so you won't have to do quarantine at either end so that's all good um and of course free fest still uh has spaces because we've kind of got unlimited spaces at free fest so that's 17th of july come down uh, into cornwall do some free diving do some do some uh, camp do some camping camp and do some free diving um next week looks like we're pretty much full on uh, monday tuesday uh, free diving at raysbury we've got a couple of spaces left on the um saturday session kind of if you want to come along and dive let us know okay without further ado let's go on to uh the week's session so um we are trying to mix them up trying to cover the 10 aspects uh that uh, are in the no tanks system so uh, for those of you uh, let's go back a bit so for those of you who aren't really up 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 with the no tanks system no tanks the ntx uh, free diving is a complete system of free diving so it's the only complete training apnea training system that there is so a um, way we've managed to do that is to split up your training into 10 discrete parts we call them aspects and there's 10 aspects of training and you want to try and cover as many of them in uh, a week a week's training as you can out of the 10 there is only one that's really hard to uh, cover uh, the rest you can do dry all ni nine aspects you can cover dry um, the, the last one is uh, adaptation to depth um, and you can do part of that and um, you know, but the actual being at depth is your best bet and you obviously can't do that dry so but the other nine we can cover okay um one of the parts of adaptation to depth by the way is bedtime stretches which we're going to go through again uh i'm going to mention it tonight i'm just looking over at my list so that's tomorrow night and um visualization which again is for tomorrow okay so let's go back to the to the, what we're doing so um last night we i asked you or right yesterday i was hoping you'd do depth walks during the day then we did equalization uh in the youtube video which included the ett and the bombilla don't know where the bombilla has gone somebody's stolen my straw uh, and then bedtime stretches to follow okay and that's 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 the first steps in um equalizing or in fact not first steps it's actually all your training you, you can do and you can do it all dry it's fantastic then today I was asking you to do pain walks. So hopefully you went out and did some um, pain walks. And the pain walks are build up the, the your tolerance to what's commonly known as lactic acid, but it's not lactic acid. It's part of the lactic cycle, but it's not lactic acid. But that's relevant. It's still painful, and they're still called pain walks. So the pain walks are where you walk in something in order of twelve double paces, empty lung at pace. And when you get uh, to the end of that, 
you three candle blows and then go again. The reason we do three candle blows, it's um, super, super important that you include these in 99% of your breath hold dives. Okay, so we've been through the reasons why we do them before, but briefly, um, uh, briefly again, you do the candle blows to neurological programming to teach your body that you're just about to hold your breath. Okay, um, telling your buddies that you're about to dive, but equally well, you oxygenate pretty much all the blood in your body in three breaths. So three breaths, and you pretty much oxygenate all the body blood blood in the body so when you're doing something like pain walks where you're doing uh, a breath hold three breaths breath hold three breaths breath hold in fact that's not that's not pain walks is it that's um zany walks that we did on tuesday no matter uh three breaths and then and then hold it again you are oxygenating the body in those three breaths so it's highly highly unlikely you're going to black out when doing the zany walks okay sorry i completely skipped over there so that zany walks way that there's no gap whereas pain walks it's 12 paces um empty lung and then oh, more actually with the pain walks or something like 15 we've had people doing 28 steps um with, with, with the pain walks it's entirely up to you where you feel the challenge come on maybe two paces more and that's it but the important thing with the pain walks is the recovery is done at pace. So you keep moving fast. And usually, when you do a breath hold, you relax after it. And your body gets used to this. You're gonna do a breath hold, and then you relax. But in the pain walks, you don't relax. So the body kind of goes, ah, you finished your breath hold, I can get rid of all this toxins I've got in my body, in, you know, in the muscles. Oh, I can't, because now you're, you're carrying on walking. That's why it feels like uh, the kind of lactic burn, as they call it. And that's why we do the pain walks, to build up the tolerance to those. Uh, okay, and uh, you will fi feel that burn quite intensively on the pain walks. The whole idea is that when you do a long swim, you don't feel it as, in as intense, so you're used to it. So that's what pain walks are. Okay. Ho sorry for any confusion in the middle of that between them and zany walks. Okay, so... But we still do the three candle blows before uh, any breath hold. Pain walks, any walks, doesn't matter. You still do the three candle blows. Uh, and then tonight I'm going to show a short video about monofin movement. So if you go through uh, the videos that we've done before, the stretching videos, I covered uh, doorway stretches and, and, and uh, chest stretches and bedtime stretches. I've all covered them. But now we're going to, this video is going to show the movements of. Uh, monofin and how you can practice them dry. So in fact, without further ado, I'm just going to play the video. We can consider monofinning in two halves, the top half of the body and the bottom half of the body. Last week, we were working on the top half of the body with doorway stretches, which allow the, the shoulder flexibility and the uh, chest stretches where you put your hands on the back of a sofa and allow the chest to go towards the floor and away from the floor. We also used the um, foam roller to stretch open and allow a little bit of movement to uh, come into the upper spine. If you remember, very simple exercise, leaning on the foam roller and feeling the, the, the vertebrae separating. If you want to increase the stretch, you can put your hands out and then simply move the foam roller along the spine and we're trying to not uh, uh, keep the hands up we're trying to allow the arms to go down into this position so as we go up and down we just pause for a few seconds at each point <laughs> but we can also consider the lower half of the body and there's some great exercises we can do the first is to try to uh, build up some flexibility and strength in the ankles. So, placing the feet flat on the floor, the tops of the feet on the floor, we can just lift the knees and allow the stretch to come into the, uh, the ankles. Try not to allow the heels to fold out, but keep them in straight. So, 
Try not to allow the heels to go outwards, try and keep them together like this. You can also extend this to put in more pressure on there and by uh, lifting the, the, the um, hips away from the heels and you can bounce here and put some real pressure on the toes rather than the tops of the feet. <clears throat> You'll find uh, that you can uh, see how much flexibility you have by simply sitting on the floor and pointing the toes. You want to try and get this as straight as you can. The straighter that is, the more efficient your uh, glide is going to be. If you lay down, it extends this position and you can really have to work to keep the hips um, tight to get that full extension. We can also work on the movement of monofinning. So <clears throat> we get into a basic position. Try to eliminate any sort of angle here by lifting the arms up, but without overextending uh, the hips or the back. So you want to be, have nice uh, flexibility in the lower part of the, the lower part of the back while keeping the hands in this position. And then we simply extend up and drive the hips forwards and then back down. Don't let the bum touch the heels and then back up again. And you can do this slowly and develop some power and, and become aware of the muscles we're using. Um, really remember to push the hips forwards and then push the hips back. You feel the stretch here on the way back and feel the stretch here and here on the way forwards. If you have a buddy they can help with this. Simply stand beside them with the hands out in front of them and I'm going to use this as a guide to make sure that I'm going straight up and straight down. So if I were to touch uh, the, uh, her hands here, I know I've moved forwards, so I can simply correct. Now, if I have not got so much flexibility, their hands will be a bit wider. As I get more flexible, they're going to be narrower and narrower. And it's not a matter of uh, Freya pushing me into position, it's just a feedback. So, <clears throat> I could just feel just feel my hands touch it, my arms touching her arms and I'm adjusting. Now if we're going to do the movement we want to do a set of movements similar to that that we'll do in a in a dive. So something in the order of 20 to 30 and then you can repeat that and you do it in the timing that you would do the swim in. Now all the time Freya can move her hands to make her adjustments, okay? So if I'm just touching or consistently touching the back hand, she can just move it away a little bit, or if I'm consistently not touching it, she can move it in. So as we go through the exercise, she can uh, adjust herself. Okay, so let's do 20 of these. Remember, not go, don't go right down at the back, keep your bum off your heels. And every time I feel myself touching Freya, touching her arms, I can move my arms to compensate. And there we go, that's one repetition or one series and we can do that two or three times. In opposition to the forward movement, we want to try and develop the back muscles. So however many uh, of the last exercise you do, you do the same of these exercises. Again, it's a dynamic movement-based exercise. So you can lay on the floor and lift the legs and the hands at the same time. And where's 
as you'll hear me say a lot during monofin sessions, the back kick, the up kick, is always a lot weaker than the front kick. Right? So we really need to do this back exercise, the lifting, and we need to do it um, again for the same amount, or aim to do it for the same amount of times as we do the lifting exercise. And that's it. Do that every other day, and then when you get back in the water, you'll notice a difference. Okay, so uh, that's uh, that's the monofin movement. Now, I'll tell you now, I did several takes of that video just to get kind of uh, the angles right, and I haven't done any monofin, in, as you know, for several months, and my uh, legs, they don't ache, so you shouldn't do it, to, you should never do any exercise until you ache while you're doing it. What you should notice is afterwards you feel you've done some exercise, and that's how I felt after that. It's really quite tough. Do a few slow ones for strength, and then do uh, uh, two repetitions to start with of, of uh, sets of 20, and that you really, really will feel uh, the benefit of that. Really worth doing. So, um, mixing it up with the stretching exercises that we put on the video earlier, and that obviously is a reminder on there, mix it up, and especially now as we're looking like we're going back into uh, water well we're definitely going back into water next week but uh and even i've had rumors that uh, some of the pools might be opening uh in 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 a short while which is awesome uh okay so um that's uh what we're doing tonight so there's only two things uh we're doing uh, for today so pain walks during the day and monofin uh, movement. In fact, actually, uh, thinking about it, they're not the best paired because uh, they're both uh, leg movements, uh, leg, uh, yang leg exercises. But, you know, um, I wanted to kind of uh, keep, them, keep them like that. So you, you may want to switch them around with, um, uh, originally, don't forget, they were switched around. Mono movements were on Thursday, pain walk and equalization was on Friday thinking about it actually that's probably a better way of doing it but it's fine um on saturday so that's tomorrow um uh, some sort of cardio work remember the best cardio work is um well the best cardio work is the work the one you're going to do so i said to somebody once one of our i think it was lucelle i said uh, you know kind of what you do and, and running she goes oh, i really really don't like running I said, well, don't do running then. <laughs> that's that's don't do it. So, um, you know, it, the best is the one you're going to do. So, cycling, running, well, if that's what you're going to do, then do it. But uh, if you can make it a little bit more in line with uh, free diving, it's going to build up your body's tolerance to what we want it to be tolerant to in free diving. So, um, for instance. Skipping really good, where you just do three minutes of a of a an active um, exercise and then and then stop, or some of the circuit training. It's it's going to be a little bit better. I try and tend to warn people off doing um, high intensity breath hold with lots of difference. Um, exercises because that's not really what you want your body to learn how to do you don't want your upper body to work well while holding your breath okay so doing breath hold press-ups is not good for free diving okay press-ups are good you know build up muscle and it's good cardio exercise there's nothing wrong with press-ups but breath hold press-ups that's not you don't want these muscles to be able to work um particularly well um uh, when uh, anaerobically without you know during breath hold um, even even if you're doing free immersion which is the most armly of free diving movements uh, that's that's not the same movement as, as as this okay so i would tend to move people away from doing yeah, uh, hard exercises breath holding um having said that we do do you know like the skipping but it's a fairly simple movement and at the moment we haven't got any uh, many other options uh, you know to get in the water and do breath hold stuff so you've got to kind of kind of pick the best that you can at the time um so um 
Uh, what was I going to say? Sorry, I've just seen a, a, a Ricardo's uh, asked a question. I'll come back to that. I'll answer that in a minute. But um, so um, yeah, so cardio tomorrow. Whatever cardio you fancy doing, just get the heart rate up, get your get your blood pumping, get get uh, you know get sort of get a tired feeling. Okay, so you've got to do something, anything you fancy doing. Uh, again, I will restate. I like I prefer, personally as a coach prefer people to do all body exercises. So um, cycling is good, but it's not all body because you're not using your arms. So realistically, same like climbing fantastic if you can get to a climbing wall which you can't at the moment but if you can get to open air climbing wall and because you're going to do fairly intense work for a few minutes and then rest fairly intense work for a few minutes and then rest or caving or, or jiu-jitsu or any of these movements oh uh, happy birthday to uh, junior today by the way um, so any of these exercises i prefer because they're short high energy ex exercises that use the entire body and i just feel this is better for um, overall fitness uh, and, and well-being of, of yourself so uh, saturday so let's go back to my uh, list so tomorrow a saturday you've got cardio during the day then visualization which we've done several of these um uh, as as podcast as podcasts as live streams so you can go back to them and then bedtime stretches again so bedtime stretches i tell people to do them every day don't have to do them every day but i tell people every day on the, on the idea that hopefully they'll do them most days or at least every other day as with all exercises there's um there's three point parts to the exercise okay there's there's the uh, um, awareness uh, of what, what you know, what you're trying to do then there's the acknowledgement then there's the ad adaptation so um, bedtime stretches you are actually stretching you're moving stuff the cartilitic joints or as we call them uh, and you're, you're bending them flex them in, in the ways they haven't flexed before so it is actually good to give them a rest okay so you do them every other every day it's not the end of the world but every other day is probably probably best so try and remember to do them every day and when, when you forget a couple of days it doesn't doesn't matter so much um so that's for tomorrow and then uh sunday i've given really nice uh, rest day uh or, or sauna if you can get to one of those um you know uh, some people have got them in their back garden haven't they mika mm. so you can have a sauna anytime you like um uh <laughs> so um if you've got a sauna you know a, a pop-up sauna in your back garden like mika has then use it on Sunday. Um, heck, if you've got an, if you've got a pop-up sauna in your house, you might as well use it every day. But there you go. Um, but more importantly, is rest. Okay, so Sunday is your rest day. Um, and one of, if not the most important part of training, is rest. Okay. Now, if you're only training once a week, twice a week, then you're resting the rest of the week. That's fine. And when you actually decide, right, I'm going to step up my training. I'm going to put my training, uh, actually build my uh, build my training into to my lifestyle. Then rest is super important. Okay, so rest and food. Okay, super underrated. But you, the more you think about it, uh, the better it's going to be. So rest, really, like. Uh, consider your rest days as part of your training obviously sleep pattern uh you know you you can you can uh change that whatever etc and people you, you, know, you can look it up what, what what's a good sleep pattern for you but rest sleep downtime for the brain downtime for the body really really important and uh food now i'm not going to go too much into nutrition but think about what you're eating it will affect you immeasurably we are what we eat so if you uh, give your body what it needs uh, in close enough to proportion to what it needs the body's going to function fantastically now um, there's loads of stuff out there about nutrition but uh, somebody once said to me and this is has been an adage that I've I've told my athletes over the years is uh the more it looks like how it is in nature the better it is for you so 
turkey twizzlers bad for you don't look like anything in nature steamed broccoli good for you because it looks pretty much like it does in nature right yeah. so um yeah just kind of yeah think about what you eat um personally i can't see the benefit of of meat um I, i've kind of looked into it and there's not much um in meat that uh, really you know kind of i personally feel uh, there's not much in meat that really um, requires animals to die for but definitely cutting down on your meat is is a definitely uh, a good move um, it makes you think about what you eat and as I said right at the beginning of the nutrition and rest chat at the end of this YouTube video it's about thinking about it it's making choices that's the important thing now if you uh, look into what you're eating and, and and choose what you're eating then you're already doing it. you're doing it you're doing it um, you are making an improvement you're consciously choosing what you eat same with your rest you're consciously uh, choosing how to rest um, you know turn the phone off rest the brain rest the eyes have some time where there's space in your life um, you know where your thoughts can be linear um, so when you watch TV uh, usual TV as, as you know TV as we call it thoughts aren't linear they are just kind of flat and blur and you're just just passively watching you know whatever TV programs are, are placed in front of you um, but when you're on a phone uh, it's definitely not linear it's it's the thought here and then the text comes in and it changes that and it changes that and your brain pattern is not in one path it kind of shoots over shoots over shoots over so you tend to find yourself getting more disjointed okay. so try and pick something where there's a nice linear flow to your uh, brain pattern and that's what you need to do in your downtime okay um that's that's kind of rest for the brain then obviously physical rest sleep and think about sleep um, you know really just do a little bit of research into it and just try and change it especially in these times we've got a fantastic opportunity uh, all of us every single one of us have got a fantastic opportunity uh, in the next month or so to really make a change in our lives so We've been enforced to do certain things, whether you have to kind of not go to work or whether you've been made off, you know, it, 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 whatever's happened has happened. But the next step as we go forward is our opportunity to put things into our life that we want to put into our lives. It's like a, a fresh slate that we're starting again. And our relationship to other people and other, uh, other uh, you know, people's lives is again, we can restart this, okay? Where we are now, you know we're, we're enforced lockdown etc etc and as we move forward so you can choose how you interact with the world so we can choose you can choose it's a fantastic opportunity hey we can only look at it a one way but let's look at it as an opportunity to move forward as we want to put some things into place anyway that's enough from me um hopefully i'll see you on uh, monday and don't forget Tuesday we have a Q&A question so please come on online and uh, do the Q&A and Wednesday um, weather looks better this week um, so come along on Wednesday to Richmond Park we're going to be slightly up the hill we're going to be playing around in the woods okay on uh, on Wednesday so Richmond Park Kingston Gate you just walk in the gate and there's a big field we're just up off you know just walk about 100 meters and then on the right there's uh, some woods that's where we'll be on wednesday so have a great weekend um don't forget to do your cardio visualization and bedtime stretches tomorrow and rest properly rest on sunday see you on monday thank you oh uh sorry completely forgot ricardo is it better for one to do back okay so the back kick 
question that Ricardo put up. Um, okay, that's just one of many, many exercises that you can do. You can do uh, the hands out and hold and lift, or keep them uh, uh, there and move, or hands behind the head. That kind of uh, tensions the shoulders a bit more. Hands out will give uh, the upper back more of a workout. We're really looking at the hips, so it's just lifting the legs up. Leg lifts on their own are a bit tough because you tend to rock, so you tend to do the arms with the legs. That's the only reason I was really demonstrating the arms. wasn't really thinking about the arms particularly, more just the, the backs. But there are lots of uh, those exercises you can do. Very easy to look up, very easy to kind of get advice on. But it's just something to get your brain, to get your brain, to get you thinking about, okay, now I've done the, the, the forward power movements, how you can match it up with the back. So I hope that answers the question and I'll 